friends, welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. My name is Chris and I am your host. Today's episode is going to be a chat with Lou Fellingham. If you have been a part of the worship scene in the UK in the last 15 years, then you will very likely have come across Lou. During the pandemic, her and her husband would do uh, Worship Wednesdays and uh, which is lead times of worship online. Uh, Lou is awesome. She leads worship for us at Spring Harvest and I think she's awesome because she's an amazing worship leader. Incredibly prophetic, uh, but also really good to chat with about what's going on in worship and, and how we might help draw people into God's presence. And um, a number of you had said, actually, I'd love to hear more about worship. And, you know, I really struggle with worship. Or, you know, a few people have said, you know, I just don't get some worship. I'm not a singer. I actually don't enjoy worshipping with singing. Uh, you know, what do I do? Is that OK? Is that not OK? What should they, you know, how should I respond? So I thought, you know what, let's get Lou in. Let's have a chat with Lou and see what she has to say on this very topic. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a conversation about worship with Lou Fellingham. So I really hope that you find this interesting to actually hear from her in her own words uh, why she thinks worship is important and how we worship is also really important. So let's jump in with a conversation with Lou Fellingham. Lou Fellingham, welcome to Make on Disciples. This is this is a real honour to have you with us today. Well, thank you, Chris. It's very good to be with you. I'm looking forward to it. We've asked the listeners over the last couple of months the kind of conversations, the kind of questions that they'd love us to be answering. And, you know, one of the ones that keeps coming out is just around worship, yeah. uh, either struggling to worship, struggling to sing, uh, not feeling it right now is a phrase that I've been shared. What do I do when I don't feel it right now? Uh, so I want to have a really good conversation with you uh, about worship. Uh, can I ask you this first? How did you get into leading worship? Uh, not just being a worshiper, Ooh, but a leading worship. That's a very good question. Um, I think for me, when I grew up uh, in church, I would often, my experience of what we would call congregational worship, of everyone being in the church together, singing together, was stand up, sing the song through, sit down. Um, it was done with um, heartfelt uh, joy and passion. And uh, it was it was real, it was authentic. And I loved it. And then when I uh, got a bit older, I went to a different type of church and experienced a different way of singing together and how those songs would be strung together. Um, and then I actually moved to Brighton to join a band specifically because they were talking about Jesus and there was stuff to find out about worship. And I, I tasted of, of this kind of experience of uh, singing together and, and stringing these songs together and waiting on God and listening for his voice. And um, and through that, I thought, I really want to know more about this. And so I moved to Brighton really to join a band that was doing uh, evangelistic stuff but also in the church and I was going to learn how to to be part of a worship team and then over the years um, opportunity has just developed for me to sing background vocals for worship leaders but then also to step into that more front leading role as well so it's kind of been a development I think over time I didn't what? wake up one morning and think oh I know what I want to be I want to be a worship leader I didn't even know that sort of thing existed to be honest it might not have done it that what the band that you joined what was it called uh, it was called fatfish yeah i remember seeing fatfish at greenbelt <laughs> as a snotty 15 year old year yeah. years ago um i didn't did churches have worship leaders then i you know, the church uh... i went to didn't have a paid person it was just you know members of the church who Yes, um, I don't know if every church would be paid, um, but they would definitely have key people in some kind of church expressions that would be kind of at the front leading people in song. Um, and so I don't know if it was much of a paid thing, obviously, depending on the kind of church you're from and also what country you're from uh, mm. can also affect um, what position and role people kind of take within the, the, the paid side of things. Mm. Yeah, I shouldn't have said paid role, really. Sure, it wasn't particularly helpful. But um, well, I just remember, know, I remember growing sometimes. up, there was, some churches had a person that seemed to be like the designated driver for the worship. <laughs> um, I think the church that I grew up in, they had different people who would just jump on the instruments that Sunday. And um, 
it was all kind of being felt through at the time it was all very yeah. new this idea of charismatic worship um, yeah 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 well it was new to me I hadn't really um discovered anything like that before um but I, I'd actually do you know what Chris one of my first times of experiencing it um was actually at Spring Harvest that was one of the first places I led I was with um the vocal band which was a youth for Christ band and we were leading worship at Spring Harvest in the youth zone and I'd never led before in my life and suddenly I was at the front leading all these kids in worship and um again it was at that point where I thought oh there's there's more to this I'd really like to grow in understanding what's going on and how to lead people in this way so yeah I mm. I've forgotten about that so we use this word worship. We've used yeah. it quite a few times now. Um, if you know what is a working definition, like what is this thing we're talking <laughs> about? Like how would you describe worship? Like what are the <laughs> facets of it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of those um, questions that I find a little bit terrifying because it is so massive and vast in terms of how you can express your worship. But for me, when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about the fact that everybody actually worships something. They make something uh, the centre of their attention and it affects their time, how they spend their money, their relationships, what they do. You know, it, it affects their focus in life, I suppose. Um, and we can all do it in different ways and different forms and um but as christians we believe that the primary thing we're supposed to worship the thing we're supposed to love above everything else is god and so um we we believe that as christians we're made to love god first and and it's not supposed to be cold or distant or far off um but actually it's meant to be birthed out of this love and this relationship and this understanding of someone who is other than ourselves because everything that we worship on in you know on the ground and the earth Earth in the world whatever whether it's a, a sport or a I don't know a, a band or a person or an ideal um they're they're basically made of human hands we we make them ourselves um yes we believe that good things come from God but actually we're still the ones that are designing and carving and making all these things happen and um the difference with God is that that no one created him and actually he created us and so understanding who he is that he is other you know that he is infinite that he is um boundless and timeless and he you know he lives without time lives out outside of time that he's full of resources and he never gets tired and he never gets bored and you know all the things that we as humans can run out of energy for or, or there's a limit on actually with god there are no limits and so when you begin to understand who he is you suddenly understand then the context of who you are compared to him. And uh, you want to turn and you want to say, oh, yeah, you're the creator. I want to make you the center. I want to give my life and my affection to you first. Now, it doesn't mean you can't care about stuff on the earth and you can't enjoy life and be involved in sport and be involved in all these different things. I love all I love life. I love being involved in those things. But they are not the thing that you're centering your whole kind of person around and god calls us to center ourselves around him mm. does that make sense i love that yeah I mean, you've used a few words there um you were centering um as you're placing him in the center you talked about uh, making him first yeah um they're, they're all wonderful metaphors aren't they really helpful you know uh w what is the first thing in your life is what you worship what is the thing that's in the middle of your life that you center mm. yourself around and and so often we make ourselves the center and we want god to orbit around us yeah but actually he's meant to be the center of the universe and we orbit around him yes. we get we get that wrong we get it mixed up um there's lots of different kinds of worship as well isn't there there's not you know to say um there, there is just worship there's, yeah. there's different kinds of worship that function in different seasons and different times yeah um could you talk us through like what what the different kinds of worship there might be well i think again it's starting um from this center point chris so you basically make him first in your life and then that then kind of um it kind of infiltrates every other part of your life so it, it seeps into how you spend your money that's an act of worship because you're making him first there how you spend your time and um, that can be an act of worship um how how you prioritize in your life those kind of things the bible talks about um it being a, a life of worship not just um 
like one thing like singing or dancing or reading the Bible. All those things can be expressions of worship, but actually it's meant to be a whole thing. It's not just supposed to be a Sunday expression, but it's meant to be an everyday expression. So I think that has to be the starting point, but then that can outwork in, um, I guess most people, when they think about worship, they would think about a Sunday service, what ha what it looks like, and, and that would usually entail um, singing, it would usually entail hearing something from the Bible, um, it would often um, entail an offering, and also coming before God for communion, remembering what he did for us at the cross. So these elements are often things that happen in our church um, Sunday services. Um, or if you meet on a Friday, it will happen. It might happen there too. Um, but, you know, th those are the kind of ones that people kind of hone in on. And those are real and they are right and they are good. But there can also be other ways that we do it through meditation, um, through prayer. That can be an act of worship. Um, through um, serving, serving one another, serving the poor. There are there are many kind of strands of worship that we can dive into. Mm. Yeah, I and I often talk about you know uh, there's praise worship, there's adoration worship. There's you know for me worship is just like wondering, you know, like wow, like God is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Got whole life worship, but th there's this worship called lament, um, which often doesn't function on a Sunday, very often on a Friday night, whenever you're doing it. Um, lament tends to be uh, missed out in the church, uh, yeah. but also is that time when worshiping is is the hardest. Mm. And often people, when they're going through times that are really difficult, the last thing they want to do is is um, is is worship in in the traditional sense. Yeah. Um, just talk to us about um, how we might worship God through different circumstances of our lives. Yeah, I think. Um... I think, you know, without being about the bush, you know, singing is definitely an important part of our worship. And we've talked before about how some people find it really easy to sing and some people find it a bit of a, a grueling task or they just don't think they can sing very well. So, you know, they don't want to do it because it's not enjoyable for them and it's not enjoyable for anyone that's around them. But I think that, um, you know, the Bible talks about um, in Colossians and Ephesians about how singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to one another is an important part of our faith journey. And I think when we go through um, different circumstances one of the first things to go can be the song it can be that the act of lifting our voices and um, declaring truth and declaring um, God's praises and who he is above all things they can be one of the first things that goes and actually what that does is it actually um, we miss out on filling ourselves um I don't know, with his peace, with his grace, with hope coming in. Um, and I think that that can be something that, that, that can go on mute very quickly. But actually God it calls us, instructs us, invites us, does it himself. You know, it talks about Jesus singing himself in the midst of the congregation. He is singing and he invites us to join in that song. And um, I, I, I guess yesterday I was I was actually in church and we were singing light of the world which is a song by a guy called tim hughes and the chorus says here i am to worship here i am to bow down here i am to say that you're my god you're altogether lovely you're altogether worthy you're altogether wonderful to me and um this week i'm going to be going to a funeral for a friend who passed quite early on it's a year's anniversary from when another friend who's the same age as me dropped dead suddenly from uh something you know brain hem hemorrhage and and then i've got um some other friends who are, are walking with some other friends who've just lost their eight-year-old daughter suddenly and so when you're singing those songs in church we can be singing the same truth but we can be expressing it differently through our hearts. So for some, it'll be like, we're on the mountaintop. I'm so thankful. I'm here to worship you, Lord. I'm here to say that you're my God. And, you know, you're so lovely and you're so worthy. And here I am. And yet for others who are maybe walking through difficulty and tribulation, 
Um, and I felt it yesterday because I know the sorrow that that people are walking and carrying, and I'm I'm feeling that sorrow, and I'm, you know, almost interceding as I sing that because I I know that for them, the position of singing those words is a, is a completely different one. It's a, it's one of brokenness, of not really understanding, of um, just sadness and sorrow at this time and so that is you can sing the same words but bring it with a heart of lament actually um mm. you know it's like here i am lord you know i'm gonna worship you even though this really hurts and i don't understand i'm gonna say that you're my god above everything else even though right now this really really hurts i'm gonna i'm gonna bow before you because i recognize that i don't understand i don't i don't realize what's going on in this it's a mystery to me but i will bow before you nonetheless and there is power as we do that as we mm. express that to him and uh, i remember when my mum died and there was one song that was saying one thing and I thought no nope, I really can't sing that right now it doesn't make any sense to me I don't it might be true but I'm not feeling it and I couldn't actually sing it but what I could sing was hallelujah our God reigns because I knew even though I didn't understand why she died and why she died young why she had to go through so much pain it was very traumatic I still knew that he was God and he reigned and so that part I could step into so I think sometimes mm. Uh, we come during those moments, God's not expecting us to put on a brave face and he's not expecting us to pretend and uh, he's not expecting us to make it up. You know, uh, what he does in, in that time is he allows us to come as we are. Sometimes it's with a groan and sometimes it's with truth, but it is this position of surrender and bowing down before him and acknowledging that he is still God, even though everything around us feels, you know, uh, like chaos or completely broken mm -hmm. um, or like you just feel like you're being consumed. And um, I think that God is inviting us to worship again, not not because he needs it, but actually because as we do that, he meets us where we are. There is something powerful as we as we surrender, as we sing, as we bring that offering of praise to him. And again, when my mum died, I'm, I, I've sung around my house since I was like, I started making noises, you know, from a baby. And, um, but that, that week, particularly after she died, I just remember just groaning and I didn't have any words. I didn't have anything that I could sing or say, but my heart, my spirit was still groaning. And, and I believe that the Holy Spirit was interceding for me at that time you know um so i i guess i would just encourage people to be real um but also not to step away from worship but actually to to bow down and to step into it mm. and as you lift up your um heads or as you um lift up a word or a groan you are pouring out an act of worship at that point mm. and then other times you'll be singing something and you're on the mountaintop and it's wonderful and it's easy and it pours forth really really wonderfully and easily you get full view of his glory but sometimes you know we just we just don't see the glory but we still know that he is god mm -hmm. mm. that's so yeah i love that there's something you just said um that i want to use in a slightly different way um yeah uh, this phrase i'm not feeling it right now yeah you talked about not feeling it right now when uh <laughs> I think your mum had passed away yeah um i hear that phrase said uh, in a slightly different way so i have people around me who will say oh I'm, I'm just not feeling it right now and it's actually apathy right yeah uh, and this is this is like, i just can't be bothered i just can't be bothered and <laughs> i spend a lot of my time trying to like say no lean in lean in yeah. not lean yeah. out lean yeah. in yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just not feeling it, and it's all yeah. about what they want and worship songs that they like. Yeah. Uh, and they're worshiping a particular way that they like it. Um, what do you <laughs> say to people who use that phrase? I'm just not feeling it right now, but you know, actually, this is more about them and their feelings than it is about anything else. Yeah. So to clarify for me, I couldn't sing "You're All I Want," "You're All I've Ever Needed," because at that point I thought, well, you're not really all I want right now. What I want is my mum. So yeah. that was why I was finding it hard to express that. But when you come to speaking truth in terms of the fact that He reigns, then you can say those things because actually they stir faith in you. And so I would encourage um, people, just like you, Chris, to to rather than going, yeah, I can't really be bothered. I can't, you know, and then. You 
you, you basically just end up moving further and further and further away. It doesn't actually just just suddenly happen. Actually, mm. you know, if you if you choose to step back, it's not like all of a sudden you're one day you'll wake up and you'll feel like it again. Actually, it tends to just diminish. And so actually God invites us to keep leaning in and keep worshipping for the very reason that our hearts can grow cold really quickly. Uh, uh, we can get distracted. We can make it more about ourselves. We can just become a bit apathetic or a bit switched off or a bit bored. Or And there can be reasons for that. It's not just that, you know, we're being lazy. You know, it might be that we've had unanswered prayer or, or we're just really tired or life is pressing in. There could be lots of reasons for it. But actually, God never says to us, sing new songs or, or sing songs to me um, when you're in the mood or if you've got a really, really great voice or if, you know, everyone else will love it. He calls us and invites us to sing to him no matter what. His, his command is sing to, to one another as well, you know, in um Colossians 3.16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And it does that not because he needs it, but actually because it's good for us to do it as we do that. God's word dwells in us richly. And as we do that, we get more understanding of who he is and uh, the way he wants us to live and and, what's he, and and we get filled with the spirit. In, in, in Ephesians, it talks about us um, being filled with the spirit as we do these things. And so I would encourage people who aren't really feeling it um, to practically, you know, get some worship music on. You can start with your favorite song if you want to, that's okay. Um, but I think, I guess I would encourage you to, you know, so start um, feeding yourself with songs and things that will stir faith in you again. Because also when you start singing about who God actually is, when you start singing Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, that stirs faith in, to, in you. And as you do that, you are filled with the Spirit. And as you do that, then your your heart does change from being apathetic and a bit bored and a bit switched off to, man, I want to run for you. I want to live for you. I give you everything again. So there's there's always this spiritual act that is occurring as we do it. So it's not just a, a religious duty or this is what we do. This is what church does. It makes us sing. Um, but actually, there is a spiritual act occurring as you step in, as mm. you sing, as you worship. Mm. Now, you are a, a music jukebox, so just remind me. <laughs> so there's a, there's a song that we've been singing recently, and it's just been just this stoking of my fire in worship. Uh, we've used it in our evening service a few times, and the lyrics go something like this. Um, Wake up my soul, oh, don't you get shy on me. Um you got fire in these lungs. Come on, help me with this one. Do you know I this don't one? know what. No, I don't. Oh, what no. is it? Who um, is it? Who's wake up, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Yeah, stirring of you. Oh, do you know what? I'm now going to. You're going to have to send that to me. Let me know oh. it. This song has just done something for me in worship, you know, right. woken me up. Uh, it's been. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I'm going to Google the lyrics. Wake up, my soul. Oh, <laughs> Don't you get shy on me. See what comes up. Let's see what comes up. This is what Google was created for. Gratitude. Exactly yeah. what Google was. Gratitude yeah. by Brandon Lake. So oh, nice. come on my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song because you've got a lion inside of those lungs. Yeah. Get up and praise the Lord. Yeah. Um, those lyrics, thank, thank the Lord for Google. Um, those <laughs> lyrics have just done something in me. Yeah. And there was about three or four Sunday nights ago, I was exhausted, absolutely exhausted. I'm at church and, and I got to preach and I was just tired. All I wanted to do was get in bed. We started singing this and it mm. was like something woke up in me. Great. Come on, my soul, wake up. And it was like yeah. I was singing kind of to myself, but, you know, cheering myself to lean in and worship yeah uh, and, and there's a choice isn't there in you know yeah we have a choice I, I might not feel it right now but i'm going to choose to worship yeah absolutely you might say i'm not feeling it right now can't be bothered well yeah well actually you're just selling yourself short sadly yeah, you miss out you miss out the thing is again it kind of flip back, flips back to that first thing chris about who's the you know what's the most important thing to you right now you know who's at the center who's who, who you're putting first and in a sense, if you can't be bothered to worship, then you've taken your eyes off the prize. Mm. You know, you've taken your eyes off of what it's all about because 
we do get blessed we do get filled and like you we do get a stirring and a faith rising but actually it's about him and as we worship him as we fix our attention on him and take us our, our attention off ourselves or our situations and we and we remember who he is we remember his faithfulness we remember the things that he's he's done for us we remember about the cross and the resurrection and his power at work and the fact that he sees from the beginning to the end and, and we remember that he's steadfast and he won't change and that he, that nothing is impossible for him as we step into remembering those things then actually we in turn get blessed. And as you're singing, as you're talking about that song, it, it reminds me of the Psalm 103, where it talks about bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. There's a stirring that that Psalm is doing. It's saying, just remember what God has done. Forget not all the benefits that you have in him. Bless the Lord, soul. Come on, wake up, mm. do it, do it. And um, and again, that can happen as we as we worship. Um, I think the thing is, we all get tired. We all can can um, we can all get a bit apathetic, or we can just get a little bit switched off. Mm. Or it might be that the worship team playing this week isn't as as good as the the one that you prefer the week before. But again, it's remembering why we're there and who we're serving, and and remembering that actually we're part of this bigger picture, this bigger body, mm. and so. A, we want to step out of this kind of individualism that can sometimes creep in at the where it's about me mm -hmm. and we want to keep investing into the whole and into what you know the body the church coming together singing together is about because also you know speaking together to one of uh, the power of, of singing songs together uh, there's something as we testify to the goodness of God there's something as we testify to who he is uh, and we do it together that also enriches us mm -hmm. Yeah, we live in an individualistic culture, don't we? Yeah, we and to do. actually come to the body of Christ together uh, to worship God together, yeah, uh, it reminds us we're a part of something bigger. But it's also there are times when when you think oh, I just haven't got it in me today, but everybody else in the room does, and they their worship lifts yeah. your worship. It's great, yeah, it really does. It yeah, really does. Yeah, and again, it's not pretending. But sometimes we just have to pull ourselves together and step into it, you know, and as we mm. do that, God does something in us. Mm. Um, and like you say, a choice, a decision sometimes um, that that doesn't have to be fake. But it, so it's a real act of worship because you're saying, right, God, I don't feel like this right now, but I'm going to choose to do it anyway. That is an act of worship, actually. Mm. Can we just swing back around to something that we kind of alluded to earlier around struggling with singing? Yeah. Uh, and I think I've right from a young age learning to play the guitar and singing Beatles songs that you know you would get used to playing and singing. But for so many people that have never had a musical moment, they've not learned to sing. So I'm just thinking about my own son. You know, singing is not something that he remotely finds interesting in any area of his life. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't catch him in the shower, you know, having uh, singing a bit of Justin Bieber. It just wouldn't happen. Uh, for those that singing just isn't there they just don't it's not them like, what would you say to somebody who who struggled with that singing well obviously um you never want to force anybody to do something um and like i guess i would i would ask questions so your son doesn't sing in the shower he might not sing around the house but if you went to a gig would he would he sing along to the gig would he sing along to what was happening in the crowd would he join in with everybody yes or no or if he went to a football match or he went to something else where there was a lot of noise happening would he join in with that because sometimes people say oh it's not my personality or i'm i'm too shy but there are actually very few people i know who are complete introverts mm. and in other contexts apart from the church context they would join in they might make a lot of noise or they might um sing um a football you know chanting whatever um there would be other contexts where they would sing along or they'd turn the radio up in the car and sing along um but then when they get into church they say oh no either they they um disqualify themselves because they don't think their voice is very good or someone else has told them their voice isn't very good so there can be reasons like that that mm -hmm. i think also are important to lift off because nowhere in the bible does it say sing if you feel like it sing if you got a really excellent voice sing if you can sing in tune i've got you know i've got some great friends who are great worshipers they can't sing a, a stitch in tune at all 
um, and uh, but they still worship nonetheless. Uh, they still sing out, and so I guess I would just encourage you, um, mm. it, not to not to disqualify yourself completely just because it doesn't come naturally, mm. because God invites you into something unique to sing. There are, you know, when I was talking about those scriptures in Colossians and Ephesians, there's something very powerful that happens as we sing. Yes, there can be things as we talk. Yes, there can be things as we do art. Yes, there can be things as we do other creative things or as we serve. But the, but it's so specific in the Bible that we should sing. Um, mm. And so we want to we want to be obedient to God in that, even if we don't sing loudly, even if we don't sing all the time. Um, but there is an invitation to actually do that. And I would say actually a command in the Bible to mm. sing. Um, and so the the I, I guess I would just encourage people mm. to um, to do it, even if they only did it, do it a teeny bit. Um, mm. And and start there. I think I do a thing with them. One of my sisters, she runs a a, um, a a business where we go into corporate settings and we'll we'll get people singing in a corporate setting who don't sing at all. We're not singing church songs. We're just singing. Um, and uh, that you'll have a, a range of people there. Some of them um, are up for it, completely up for it. Yes, this is what I'm made to do. Others are up for it, but they they're not really. They don't really sing. They don't. They'll just go for it anyway. And then you have others who are like, "No way, I'm not doing this at all." And then by the end of the session, where we've taught people to just sing and then sing in harmony, you discover that there's a lighter, a lightness, and a joy, and there's a well-being that kind of shifts in the room just from singing. And a high percentage of people um, have moved kind of forwards towards the enjoyment of singing than they mm. assumed they would at the start of the session. And I think sometimes people get this mindset, well, that's not what I do. Um, and actually they, they miss out on the opportunity to actually discover this could be something that I do. This could be something that I actually enjoy. Again, it doesn't mean you have to go to a choir. It doesn't mean you have to stand up on the stage and sing. But God commands us to sing and he does it um, for a reason, you know. Mm. I'm reminded that on a Sunday morning, there's um, there are those that sing. There yeah. are those that help the singing by making the music. And then you've also got those that en enable the whole space, you know, worshipping through doing the song words, worshipping through doing the the, um, the sound. And, the, 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 you know, the corporate call to worship can also be enabled by people as well, can't it? So if somebody is really struggling with singing, then actually I... there are ways that they can help enable others that, that is an act of their worship. You know, I'm here enabling my community to worship god through singing by provide helping provide the space where that's possible uh, yeah so i totally i totally i i think that's true but i i mean obviously i'm a singer so you might just think that i'm gonna hone in on it because that's what i do <laughs> um but i guess i would say that probably 99 98 percent of people can sing in some shape or form um, and so again, it would be a choice. So you could even say, right, well, I don't really like singing, Lord. Um, this isn't really my favourite thing to do, but you're asking me to do it, and so you must think it's a good good idea. So I'm going to do it anyway. And it, uh, and I guess I there there are just so few people who really really couldn't sing at all mm. um, because they're so shy. Um, mm. And so again, it's it's that activating that choice to do something and discovering actually that as you do that, God is doing something in you. Now it might not be that singing suddenly becomes your best friend and your most favorite thing to do in the world, but God is at work as you do it. There is a spiritual thing happening as you do it. And so I guess I would keep um, encouraging people again, not to step back, but to step in, mm. even if it's like joining the chorus or you know find a way um and if if people really are finding it difficult there are there are ways to kind of progress with it as well so you know through starting with with using your voice so it might be that you speak out a song lyric first of all or you speak out a psalm and you just get used to hearing your voice making a noise and then it could be that you find a context where you can sing with other music around you that's not in a public setting, not where anyone else can hear you, but you could put some music on and you could begin to sing along with that. Um, and then after that, you could sing it maybe 
on a Sunday where there's a congregation. So, you know, God's kind. Mm. He's not, Build he's it not up. wrathful. Yeah, he's yeah. not going to, he's not wagging his finger over you because you don't like singing. He's made us all different. But I would, I would push back and say that, yes, we can all serve, but also God really does tell us to sing. So mm. uh, hey, that, that might not be what you so... want to hear. <laughs> no, I, I find it really interesting talking to you about worship. Thank you so much. I'd love to add more time with you to talk about the prophetic worship. Oh, really, yeah. I love how you lead worship. Maybe that's another episode <laughs> at a later point, but we've definitely run out of time today. Oh. So maybe part two, we can talk about prophetic worship because I would Sounds love good. to explore that with you a little bit more. Look, Lee, if people want to find you, want to ask questions, just want to follow you in some form of social media, how do they do that? Yeah, you can just go on to loufellingham.com, which is my website, or you can look up my name, Lou Fellingham, on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter. And you'll find me there. I am kinder than I sound. I know I'm sounding a bit bossy, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm the eldest sister of five. I get a bit bossy sometimes. <laughs> I, I wasn't seeing it as bossy. I, I, you were coaching us in how to lean in. That's what that was. Oh, well done, past Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, thank you so much for your time. And we will All catch right, up. We'll have you. another episode because I do want to talk to you about, about the prophetic stuff. But Great. thank you so much for giving us your time today. Thanks for having me.